The dental marketing landscape is constantly evolving. If you wonder how your practice can do a better job of attracting new patients online, join dental SEO expert Ross Dunn and various guests for a regular exploration of the dental marketing services proven to attract new patients. Take a break and join your host, Ross Dunn, for a lively discussion on Dental Web Marketing 101. Hello, and welcome to the Dental Web Marketing 101 podcast, episode number three by First.Dentist. My name is Ross Dunn, and I'm the director of SEO and co-founder of First.Dentist. And I'm joined today by our vice president of marketing, Andy Bernhardt. Hi, Ross. You're having a good day otherwise? Yep, having a great day. Our 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 backs are bugging us today, but otherwise pretty good. That's good. Um, Today, we are going to jump into website design considerations. It's going to be a two-parter, at least, um, because, frankly, considering everything that goes into a website, uh, a new website is significant, and we want to make sure that uh, we're thorough. So, part one here, preparing for development. When we have discussions with clients about their first website, or even just upgrading a website, where do you usually start? Well, because we're a dental industry specific website design company, um, we, you know, we've built a lot of dental websites over time. Um, We've got a pretty good idea of what a um, dental website should look like. And so um, that's one of the, you know, one of the things is we're, we're not really starting from scratch, right? We know all of the different components, so like what should go on a dental website, right? You know, mm-hmm. just like for example, one of the things that we try to do with practices is uh, try to really showcase them authentically, right? Because that's what um, new patients and you know, existing patients um, are looking for, right? When they go to the website, they want to see, you know, the practice and who works there, all those types of things. And so we're really coming out of you know a bit of an age of very kind of, you know, for dental practices anyway, there's a lot of large companies in the industry that have made very kind of like stock photo sort of, you know, really kind of basic kind of websites for dentists. So um, that's kind of usually where, you know, I start is, you know, talking with the dentists, you know, and telling them about what our experience is, you know, showing them some of the sites we've developed. And usually when they take a look at those sites, they're like, yeah, that, that, that's what I want. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. And, and, you know, when, when we're dealing with websites too, I, I like to focus on um, understanding what their expectations are. Yeah. You know, what, you know, what does the client expect from the process and ultimately the website? I mean, there is a interesting discrepancy between what we believe a client ex- should expect from a website and what they believe. Uh, not all the time, but it's certainly nothing I take for granted anymore. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Um, and and w- as soon as we do, somebody wants something really unique. <laughs> and we're and, usually happy to oblige as long as it makes sense. But uh. yeah, and, and you don't want the business owner, never mind us, we don't really want anything to come out of the blue because we want to focus on what we know is going to work for them. And we've already quoted for a certain amount of work. You know, no one likes to surprise. I mean, we, again, we can handle it, but uh, the more insight we have into what the client's expectations are, uh, the better off things will be. That's right. Um, yeah. And fortunately we do have a little bit of in, insight into that, but um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's always an enjoyable process starting a project and uh you know, trying to find out a little bit more about that practice and potentially what makes that practice unique, what makes the people work there unique, you know, all those types of things. So, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely something I, I always enjoy getting that kickoff and, uh, you know, getting to meet the new practice owners and stuff. But one of the things that I find is that oftentimes practices, um, you know, they're busy, they're busy being a dental practice. Right. And one of the things that you know we try to do is we really try to take a lot of that workload of building the site off of them right and sometimes if you're working with you know a local agency who doesn't have experience in medical or dental you know be a bit of a slog trying to help them figure out what what a dental or medical practice website should look like right so yeah. yeah and and you know i guess examples of of expectations um would be an interesting place to go from here um you know, so if a client expects their website to um, simply be a uh, business card for their business, we get that a lot. Um, yeah. We say, well, 
okay, but it can do so much more and we're going to make sure it does. That's right. um, and, you know, as a result, we have certain expectations as well. And, and that's because these days you can't just put a website and make it succeed without something of, of use on it. So we often, ex- um, again, there are occasional circumstances where this doesn't def- apply, but in most cases we're saying, okay, if you're going to have a website, we need to have something with some fresh content, something that's unique, something that uh, stands out from the rest. Cause there are a lot of dentists. There's a lot of orthodontists. So there's a lot of cosmetic dentistry. Um, these are all, all fairly saturated fields in different cities. So what are, what's going to make you stand out? And I'm not just saying a beautiful website because that's going to be a given. <laughs> it's, um, you know, what else can be on there? Um, and sometimes the clients don't expect that there's work involved that they can't just pay for. I mean, technically they can. We could get writers to do like, more content for them. But at times that's problematic too because it has to be in their voice. Yeah. Again, not always, but sometimes. Now, there's a lot of that. <laughs> it's lots mm-hmm. of ands or buts. And that's part of understanding that uh, expectation. It is, yeah. Um, yeah, and it is It is one of those things where, um, you know, sometimes, you know, dental practices have had websites built and it's been a very hands-off process, right? But oftentimes it shows, right? Because it's all just stock photos and, you know, stock content from the, the dental association that they belong to or something like that, right? Which, you know, isn't going to help them, you know, rank in the search engines and, you know, it's not, not going to make an impression besides that, you know, dentistry is a, a commodity. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, they'll, they'll say like, um, I want to put up a, a service page um, on dental implants. Excellent. Okay. So um, wh- what kind of content can we look forward to there? You know, have you got anything written? Oh, I just wanted to put up this uh, PDF from my industry. You, you can't really do that. Make sure you can, but it's not going to be beneficial because that content is not unique. It's being used elsewhere. Um, yeah. Either people have copied it and put it on their sites or they're doing the same thing as you and, and it's just not going to stand out. Um, you know, you can have it there as a resource, as a download, but there has to be a, a voice on the page speaking about what you offer, maybe even some video. Um, uh, video can be touchy in the dental realm. Some people don't really want to see anything to do with that. They just want to imagine that their dental implants will be done. <laughs> That's it. They don't want to know There are details. nice explainer videos, though, that, that <laughs> there, there <needs> animation <laughs> things like that. Yeah. But yeah. 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 We've so. had that argument, though, before. Like, people don't want to see that stuff. Well, no, you don't have to be gruesome about it. Again, yeah. explainer videos are great. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's actually one of the things that, you know, I always try to go over with clients, right? Because whenever we get a photographer or videographer, right? They're like, yeah, let's get shots of you doing some work. And it's like mm-hmm. dentistry can make a really, you know, it can make people quite nervous, right? And so you know, we always try to focus on smiling before and after pictures and things like that, right? Not the... Uh, the actual work with tools in the mouth and those types of things. So, yeah, that's yeah, another that's, thing I see a lot of. And I'm like, I think this web design company probably didn't work in the dental industry with these kind of pictures on the website. So, Yeah. And, and actually that's one of our later points here, but I'll jump into it now. It's um, creating photography and, and getting video done. Um, those are two really, really strong points for marketing. Um, and the beauty of it too, is if you get video done, oftentimes you get a photographer with that package that can come in and do photos while the video is being recorded, because obviously you're already at your best when the video is happening. Yeah. Um, and you can, you can ask a friend, a, a family member even to sit in as a, a, a perspective or as a patient, a sample patient. Yeah. And you know, you don't have to, to get in there and, and do any work, just look like you are. Um, and yeah that goes a long way from not looking fake, uh, especially, you know, um, if that is in sync with the video, like if they go and look at the video of, of this fantastic tour of your business and you see the same person that's also in the photos, that's, that's pretty cool. It's compelling. And, and, and it, it is, c- yeah. ties you in. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, I really think that's what people are looking for from the local business website is authenticity, right? They really want to see what does this practice look like? What do these people look like who work in it? And, you know, a great video can showcase you, your staff, your practice, like in, in a really great light. And, you know, I guarantee you if somebody goes to 
a website that has a fantastic video that showcases your practice and they can see good pictures of people working there. And then they go to, you know, the, the, for the pro site stock, <laughs> stock photo site, right? Like they're going to choose that, that person almost every time. Right. So um, it's a really great marketing advantage and, you know, gives you ability to, to stand out um, and create a great user experience. Right. And that's really what it's all about is the person coming to your website who's thinking about becoming a patient at your practice. Like, do they get what they want? Is the um, existing, um, you know, the, the person who's already part of your practice, right? Do they go there? Like, what do they want to do? They want to contact you. Maybe they want to find out some information about a, uh, um, a service or a procedure. So it's one of those things, I think, that uh, focusing on creating that user experience and what people want to see is important. So Yeah, and, and one of the things that... Uh, I didn't want to forget, I actually had forgotten in our points here, but it's added is, is differentiations between businesses. When you're choosing a web design company, or frankly, often it's web design marketing, uh, you name it, they're all together doing it for you as a, um, as a clinic uh, practice. Uh, you want to look at a couple, well, a number of things. Obviously, the first thing many people look at is, you know, the quality of their work and the price. But you also have to remember you often will find the best prices for cookie cutter sites with those stock fit photos. And also um, they're often on proprietary platforms, which sound fantastic. I mean, they're going to offer so much to you. They'll, they'll cut their costs in half compared to the competition, et cetera, et cetera. You hear all these things all the time. That's, that's a bad move in my opinion, because if you go with those people, you're going to end up with, um, well, obviously the cookie cutter site, which no one really wants, um, and uh, a look that's not necessarily going to convert into new patients. But you may be on a platform that you can't get out of easily. Um, that, for example, if you wanted to transition that site to a new company at some point because uh, you find the fees are just too much or you're just not so happy with the service, well, that's on their system. You're going to have to have that rebuilt to work on other systems. Um, you know, a good company can take that, and we've done this before, uh, a system that is... Uh, proprietary and we've taken the website and, and rebuilt it to look identical on say WordPress, but um, which is our primary system of use, but that's still money. You know, there, there's, there's a cost there and there's also uh, yeah. a bit of headache involved. Just be very, very careful. And there's often hidden expenses as well. You get what you pay for big time when it comes to marketing and web design. So yeah. do keep that in mind we get that a lot of companies coming to us that want to switch and are in that situation. So I figured I'd better mention it. Yeah, no, it's important, right? And there are a lot of uh, players in the industry that do have, you know, kind of specific packages that, you know, may look uh, attractive, right? But when it comes to trying to get service or when it comes to updating the site or, you know, trying to change it, it's, it becomes very difficult, right? So. Um, and, and one thing that occurred to me is, is that support level too if you need help or if you're upset about something or anything, you could be sent to someone who we don't even know each time you call. Whereas with yeah. more boutique companies that have, um, you know, they've created a service for um, higher end, ser higher end results. You're going to deal with the person that did the website or at very least the person was just above them, not below. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a f huge difference. Yeah. Huge. And, and really it's, it's actually, it's a pretty small amount of money to relatively speaking for a dental practice, um, you know, to, to develop a website that, you know, does look fantastic and, you know, that you own it and, you know, you get good service for it and it's secure and, you know, easy to do updates, all those types of things. So, yeah. And I don't think this is putting us on the spot. I'm, I'm always considering that, but I think if we tried to get kind of a range, so let's say a cookie cutter site, what do you think would be the cost? Again, no, you guys can't hold this to us, <laughs> uh, but um, what, 3,000, 2,000, some of these cookie cutter sites, um, including a sort of yeah, basic marketing package? I mean, I think a lot of them are doing um, like kind of month, they, they think they're working more towards getting some kind of monthly sort of thing going, uh, right? Pay it so off. Sometimes they don't even have to pay it up front or maybe it's a little price up front. Right. $8,000 and then two or $300 a month or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. It just, it, it just depends on, on that. But um, yeah, say you went to like a, a local um, 
a local shop or, you know, one of those people from uh, um, your email spam managed to actually get a hold of you and sell you a site for a couple thousand dollars or something. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you could definitely have a site built for that much as well too. Right? Yeah. Well, and then, you know, when you get to the higher end, uh, well, a higher end, say moderate end, um, yeah. you may have that upfront cost for someone who does it more professionally, but yeah. between five and 8,000. Yeah. I, you know, that's going to, ex- you're going to expect that that includes sometimes, again, depending on the breadth of the site, uh, the video photography, but yeah. p- perhaps, um, say 4,000 of that would be that if it was nine, uh, say eight to nine. Um, but then you've, you've got something that is outstanding and yeah. something you can be proud of and say, this is, this is unique. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, you just can't, it's hard to put a, a dollar amount on that. Yeah. And I mean, in this day and age too, right. Your website really is your, you know, your community presence as well too. Right. So mm-hmm. anytime anybody wants or needs any information about you, they go to your website. That's, that's the impression that they have of you. Right. So mm-hmm. it's um, yeah. Uh, why, why not make it a great impression, right. And get great photography, get some good video, get a website that works really, really well. So. And yeah. we're not saying this just because um, it's, you know, it's, a higher end website. We're saying it because we know it works. You know, we see better results, more patient requests, everything. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's night and day yeah. effective having this content. Yeah, it, it is. Right. And it's like, I mean, you think about, you think about it from, you know, your own personal perspective, right? If you go to a website and you see the business owners and you see what the business looks like and how it's running and things look well organized and well designed and stuff, right? But well, I'll shop here, right? And then you go to some cookie cutter thing that's very confusing, doesn't work. <laughs> you can't get an idea of what's really going on. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah no, exactly. It's, yeah, it's not rocket science. <laughs> yeah. So another consideration is uh, what kind of services do you need to build into the site? And I, services is not the right word. Um, it's more technology. Let's say technology. For example, your front end office software may have abilities to port into a website or may accept um, uh, inquiries through the website and get funneled right into the system. There may be places where you can Im- implement a um, document section where people can fill out medical information before sending it off. There's a lot that can be done um, is, using yeah. these integrations. And that's something your design company needs to know as well. Um, now, we've run into a couple of these recently. Nothing super intense, but what, what are a couple examples you can think of or at least one there, Andy? Well, um, you know, I think one of the primary ones is the ability to fill out the forms on the website, right? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, again, if you're using uh, something like WordPress and you're not using a proprietary CMS, um, it can oftentimes be relatively easy um, and inexpensive to integrate all of those different pieces of office software into it, right? Um, But, you know, sometimes when you're working with somebody else's proprietary system, yeah, it can be really tricky and funky to get all that stuff working, right? But um, we use WordPress and it's it's great. And the the themes the theme that we use to build stuff with is very easy to integrate all of these and make it look great, make it work well, right? So yeah, and not every system will be a simple porting over. Um, yeah. Sometimes they don't have very good infrastructure to allow that kind of integration, but. Um, We've had experience with the most popular ones though, right? So yeah. it is, it is, should be relatively easy. And, and if it's not, you might also want to look at your office software. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> in, this, yeah. in this day and age, it's uh, all these types of integrations are pretty important. <laughs> well, one key integration is reviews. And yeah, I've been right? astonished by some of the systems uh, and very popular ones we've looked at lately that, took reviews, allowed you to build reviews from your business, so testimonials from your patients, but yeah. then there was no way for those to be put online. I mean, yes, you could put just the, that information on your website. Um, they've, they've accumulated the info, but there was no way for them to be shared to third-party sites like Google, or M, MD, lack of word here. What is it called? Um, RateMDs.com. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's, there's a number of places that you can put these in. and there's no integration to these third-party platforms, which is, no. wow, that's where it's really going to help you. 
Yeah. Um, and every system we we've had to research has to have that. Yeah. And, uh, and many doctors, many clinics don't know this. They have no idea. No. Yeah. And it's, it, it is one of those things too, right? Like if you, if you work with a dental specific, um, uh, website or a marketing company, right? Usually they will have some type of, you know, well thought out system like uh, that, that you can use or you can integrate into your practice. Right. But, you know, if you're, you know, going with some of these kind of proprietary kind of cheaper end packages, or if you're going with a local company, they don't know these types of things, right? And they don't know how a um, dental practice, you know, needs to be marketed, what type of, you know, review system is going to make their lives easier rather than making yeah. it worse. <laughs> and this, you know, when, we t- when we talk to that company about it, I'm like, does, do they have this? Just, oh, no. No, we don't and offer that integration to, to Google and more. No. Why not? I don't think we've got a reply. Um, it's just, it's astonishing to me. That's like, I don't know. I don't even know a, a good example. Offering a car without wa- wheels. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's interesting, right? Because we, we've, we've lived and breathed marketing for a pretty long time. And so we are aware of like the really good solutions. And if something that's is really great comes along, you know, we will switch over to it. Right. Like as long as it makes sense. Yeah. So, and, but you know, not everybody out there in the marketing or kind of digital world, right? Like some of these people invest a lot of money into their tools and their systems and their company, and then they can't get out of them. Right. But, you know, we tend to go with more cloud-based services and, you know, we, 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 I don't know. Yeah, but compliant ones as, though. We don't tend to get as stuck as much. Right. Yeah. And we should stress, we always going with HIPAA compliance. Yes. Yeah. That's critical. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, we'll and get more into that in the next uh, episode. But it's absolutely people can get confused about cloud and privacy yes. stuff. But um, and the cloud yeah, is no, that's... it can be very secure. Um, again, you do have to do your homework, and we've done that. But um, and you can do it yourself. It's very doable. It just takes time. Yeah, and we'll be talking about that in the next episode. And that's something that um, you know I think uh, dentists and office managers will really you know be interested in because you know we still run into it all the time. We see all kinds of violations of, of HIPAA stuff and you know insecure websites. But that's one of the things that we take very seriously, and we spend a lot of time developing. Uh, um, systems and technology to uh, make sure that uh, dental practices are um, safe. So. Well, and make sure, you know, and, and from that point of view, make sure that whatever design company or company you choose to do your marketing also considers HIPAA compliance critical. If they don't even mention it, uh, wonder what's going on. Um, yeah. It, well, you know, if you don't work in the industry, you probably don't know about it, right? So, mm-hmm. And yeah. it's not a simple read. No, no, it's not at all. So, yeah. um, actually, you have some yeah, good information on our blog. On it, but we'll say, talk yeah. about it in the... Yeah, Andy, you do have something, don't you? It's an article completely about HIPAA compliance and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it is. And all of the different... What, and how it specifically you know, relates to uh, websites and uh, dental marketing too. So, cool. yeah. well, we'll try and share a short link to that at the next show. Yeah. Um, so the last piece here, I mean, really expectations, differentiations between site companies, site objectives, this is all stuff we could talk about a lot longer because um, there's always incidences where we're, we're surprised by a new question or new consideration. But we've, yeah. I think we've generalized a fair bit of that. One other area, though, and I discussed it briefly earlier, is content. Now, who is writing your content? Is it going to be new content? How much of it's being brought over from your old site if your old site exists? There is a lot to that. Uh, again, oftentimes, if it's from the old site, it may be outdated. Uh, you can't get lazy about content. It's going to be very important. It's, and from your search engine optimization point of view, um, you want to ensure that that is setting the great stage for your SEO. Because uh, whatever they optimize, you want to stick with it because otherwise, to go back and re-optimize it again. Um, uh, anyway. If you are going to use someone in-house, fantastic. Just make sure they know how to do some decent writing. They don't have to be excellent. Um, Any company that you hire that helps you with the marketing can easily hire an editor or even do the editing for you. Just make sure it's decent. Um, And I do. I think that's the best solution is to have someone in-house or yourself do the writing. Yeah. 
Yeah, and we know everybody's busy, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's sort of a one-time kind of investment as well, too, right? And, um, yeah, it can, make, it can make all the difference, right? And, yeah. you know, like just as an example, one of the um, – a, f- a friend of mine recently, she, I think, had to get um, a root canal. And uh, so she went to the dentist website and, you know, um, the writing on the page that explained the procedure, all those types of things, it really actually put her at, um, you know, ease, like after reading about it all and that, you know, it may not be that painful and you know, here's all the details involved in it, those kind of things, right? And, um, you know, if you just have like a little blurb on your website or, you know, some PDF that, you know, doesn't really actually explain things that well, right? It, it it doesn't do a service to your to your patients. So, you know, having uh, really well built out pages um, with good writing on them about these uh, different services that you offer um, can really make a difference to the patients. So. Cool. Um, is there anything else we want to mention in this episode? I'm trying to think, uh, we covered a lot of them, and I know well, I'm going to remember you, stuff. You after, want to say but... something about content and SEO, right? Because that's that's a big deal too. Well. And you know, we, we kind of covered a bit of that, but I mean, um, when it comes to writing additional content, you know, so we're talked about the base content for your site. Um, the other part is uh, writing. And I know I can already feel the groans because I hear it all the time. <laughs> I mention it to clients, but uh, blog content, um, creating content on a regular basis is not an easy thing to do. Most people hate it. Um, but there typically is information that you can share on a regular basis. It could be um, the latest technologies. It could be hell about an event that you're having at your at your location for a charity, um, or charities that you're recommending people you know donate to this Christmas or whatever it may be. There's lots of different things, and then you can use that content and post them to Google My Business. Uh, there is a post section within Google My Business called Google Posts, and um, they only have a certain uh, shelf life, they, they do disappear after a short period of time. But if you're active on there and you continue to post, it looks good. It stands out. Um, yes. So and, you know, there's, the that, that think, content can be reused too, right? So, you know, one of the things that one of our dental practices um, just did was uh, they wrote an article on Alzheimer's and gum disease, right? Which is, a, it's a really important topic and it's very useful information for their patients. And, um, you know, they put it in their newsletter, we put it up on the website, you know, they used it on social media. And these are all things that, you know, patients, um, they, they like, it's helpful for them to see this information. And, um, you know, it can help with recalling people back into the practice too. So, you know, anything, there's always like cool studies coming out about uh, um, dental uh, hygiene and health, all those types of things. So, you know, picking one of those topics and mm-hmm. writing a little bit about it. And um, yeah, it's not just yeah. good for your website. It's good for new patients and getting them back yeah. in, right? Because I read it and I'm like, okay, got to start flossing. Got to go back in for my appointment. <laughs> and you can have fun with like myths too. Oh, Lord, I'm sure there's a ton. Um, yeah. You know, myths about uh, treats at Halloween or myths about what treats are good for you. Uh, myths about what you should or should not be eating and your, uh, giving your kids for lunches. Mm-hmm. Um, or Did you drink lemon water? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are, are um, fruit leathers a good idea? No. You know, things like that. Our kids nearly lost their teeth because we were doing that so much. We didn't have a clue. Yeah, exactly. um, it, there's, there's a lot that you can write about. And, and we help create, and, and any, any company you work with, I'm sure, would help you create um, what we call an authority building plan, a, a concept uh, that's designed to build uh, people, or increase the number of shares of your content, increase the interest in your content because it's so well written that um, you build authority in Google's eyes. Uh, You know, Google will see that you've got shares. They will see that there's a certain amount of buzz around your content. That leads you to have more authority and more authority gives you more clout to get the rankings you need. It's kind of a weird transition there, but so these may not get you new patients, the content themselves, but they will uh, build the authority that allows you to get the visibility you need to get those patients. Yeah. A bit of a mouthful, but yeah. it is very important. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, all businesses should in this day and age should have a content strategy, right? Because adding content to 
you know, your website, adding content to your practices, communications, it, it goes a long way and um, people are consuming it. So, yeah. Take that, take that next step. Okay, well, the next episode, we're going to talk about uh, the development process. Uh, you know, we've already prepared for development by asking a lot of these questions and we're going to create uh, a, a bit of an outline, uh, how the new website will function, what the content you know, will look like on the new site, what needs to be written so you can start doing that or whoever it is that's going to be doing it. Um, there's a lot of structure that comes out of this discussion. Um, then development begins. So that'll be the next episode. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, on behalf of myself, Ross Dunn, co-founder of First Dot Dentist and Andy Bernhardt, VP of Marketing, thanks for joining us today. If you have any questions you'd like to share with us, please feel free to email info at first.dentist. Thank you for listening and remember to tune into our next episode where we'll be sharing more one-on-one tips and news on dental web marketing. Thanks for joining us and I hope you have an enjoyable week. You have just listened to another episode of Dental Web Marketing 101 with SEO expert Ross Dunn. We hope you enjoyed the show and gained some insight on how to attract new patients online. To subscribe and access the show notes, please visit dwm101.com. Join us again next week. And until then, keep on smiling.